Max, we're continuing our series of to-do lists. What does each FBS team in Texas need to do to succeed in 2017? We've mentioned that succeed uh, is a is a relative term for all these teams. Yep. For example, we think that Houston probably needs to win like eight or nine, wi- probably nine games would be considered a successful year. Right. For a team like UTEP, maybe just getting back to six wins, five wins, six wins would be good. Texas State kind of similar that, you know, they just need to get their, get moving in the right direction. SMU, I think, has very clear goals. Uh-huh. Very clear bar for success. A bowl, successful. Not a bowl, failure. I think that's I think that's fair, right? Like yeah, I think they, that's where we're at with them. If yeah. they go if they go seven and five or six and six and go to a bowl game, hunky dory. Things yeah. are moving in the right direction. And there are people picking them to do a lot more mm-hmm. than that. So if they go five and seven and they miss a bowl, I don't think there's any way you can frame two thousand seventeen as anything but a failure. We thought that last year they came close, but that would have been a year early, right? Right. Especially with uh, Matt Davis going down and Ben Hicks taking over. Right. For me, though, the the, the, the stakes are very clear cut. It is bowl or bust for SMU in 2017. So what has to happen for them to get there? Here are the three things, in my view, that SMU has to do to succeed in 2017. Number one, let Ben Hicks cook, okay? Just start cooking. Start stirring it up. Ben Hicks took over last year, probably a year earlier than they wanted him to. Right. When Matt Davis went down with injury. And, in many respects, Ben Davis, or Ben Hicks, rather. Ben Davis. I just com- wow. I just uh, all right. combined Ben Hicks and Matt Davis. Ben Hicks played like a freshman. Okay, I, I, that's not a knock. A talented on him. freshman. A talented freshman, but He's in got the an end, arm. But in the end, a freshman nonetheless. He was a guy who who had a knack for. He would make some incredible throws that you go. That's what they see in him. Right. Absolutely. That's what he's about. He also threw 15 interceptions. Yep. And that's not the kind of thing. He only completed 55% of his passes, which is about 5% lower than where they want him to be. This is a guy who clearly has all the tools, but he's got to mature. SMU, I, I, get, I get the feeling that this is not an issue, that they are fully committed to Ben Hicks. I feel like he's the guy, mm-hmm. right? And they believe he's the yeah. guy. He's going to go in, and he's going to be the guy. Yeah. He's going to have some growing pains. Those 15 interceptions are yeah. not going to go to zero. Right. Okay? What you want them to do is that, I don't know what his interception rate was, but um, I should I probably should have looked that up. That probably would have been a good thing to do, Greg. Well, um, but we know the 15 isn't good. 15 is not good. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> his rate needs to come down. Okay, right now, in fact, let's uh, let's do the quick math here. So he threw 15 interceptions out of 422 attempts, uh, about a 3.5% right. um, um, inter- interception percentage. Not great. Not great. Not what you want. You want that to be down closer to about 2%. Okay? Now, here's the thing, though. He's going to struggle a little bit, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. As long as he's moving in the right direction. Don't panic, and, and especially fan, fans, panic if he throws a couple of picks. Panic if he makes a couple of bad reads. He's got to grow. You've got to let him cook, and you've got to let him play his game because the talent is absolutely there. Everyone can see it. That is clear as day to me, is that Ben Hicks has the talent. you just got to let him cook, and maybe that means making a couple of mistakes, right. but you've got to let him cook. That's my, that's my first thing. Number, first and foremost, it's Ben Hicks. You've got to let him be Ben Hicks. Number two, you got to reverse the red zone. This was something that's relatively interesting. When you get into the red zone, you should be scoring at a pretty high rate. You should be scoring about 90% of the time, I would say, uh, is, where, is where you want to be uh, scoring, about 90%. And then on the flip side, you want to be holding your opponents to under 90, and under that, around 80%, right? Mm-hmm. Those would be good ratios. SMU had it flipped last year. SMU, when they got in the red zone, they tended to stall out, and they tended to, to turn the ball over, right. too. 80, 80% com, uh, basically an 80% conversion rate, scoring rate, in the in the red zone, 91st in the nation. Fair or not, this is a criticism of that style of offense, sure. too. Is, right? that, is mean, that when you don't have, when you can't stretch it deep, right. 
you you know when you're when you, when the defense has to play up we close, pound, we need to pound out three yards at a time. Right? Can you do it? You can get the twenty yard play, but you right. can't get the two yard run. That is that you're absolutely right. That is a knock on this style of offense. They've got to reverse that and get better offensively in the red zone. Simultaneously, they were not good in red zone defense. Ninety point ninety point nine percent of their opponents' red zone trips ended in a score. That's one hundred thirteenth in the nation. They've got to be better. They've got to be able to win the crunch when crunch time comes, and when it gets to winning time in the red zone. They've got to be able to hold. They've got to be able to hold them out of the end zone. They've got to be able to stop those three yard runs that have ended in touchdowns. They've got to be able to tighten up. This is a bend don't break defense. That's fine. But when you get to that breaking point, you got to hold. All right. And they didn't do that enough last year. And that's a big reason why they were maybe one win away from making a bowl last year. Right. They've got to res- reverse the red zone, become better offensively, and become better defensively. If they do that, there's a, you know, when you're five and seven, and and a lot of the games they played, it feels like they were this close in a lot of those yeah. games, like one or two plays. Those are the margins where you can start turning those close losses into close wins. It's got to start in the red zone. And number three on the list of things SMU must do to succeed in 2017, stop the big play. So bend, don't break is a good mentality right. if it works. Sure. And, you know, we talked a little bit about, um, I don't remember, it was, was it Texas? Texas was, was really the victim of the dink and dunk, right? It was just dink and dunk, and they sure. never ended up coming, getting that stop. For SMU, they tend to, they, they can get that stop, and they actually took the ball away two times a game, which is pretty, you know, a, which is, you know, top half of the nation. That's what you want in this style of defense. But, for me... They've got to find a way to stop the big play because when teams are scoring on them, in a lot of ways, in many respects, it comes in big chunks. Last year, they gave up 37 plays of 30 yards or more. Mm-hmm. 37 plays. That's 112th in the nation. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you are then you are then in the. Uh, I'm going to pull this up. You are then here. Here's who is behind them. Okay. Baylor also gave up 37 plays. I don't think we think of them as some lockdown defense, right? right? Texas Tech did give up 44. Whoa. Rice actually gave up the most in the nation of 48. Interesting. But you are in that company, okay? The average tends to be about 28, okay? They've got to be able to find a way to eliminate those big plays. Yeah. And a lot of them, for me, a lot of them weren't from busted coverages. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, in watching SMU, a lot of those big plays came... With missed tackles. Right. With just flat out, one-on-one, you got to wrap him up, and yeah, he's going to get five yards, but he's only getting five yards. Right. When you break, when but they missed too many tackles, mm-hmm. in my view, last year, and that's what led to a lot of these plays. Beyond that, I mean, you start, when you start going up, they gave up 20 plays of 40 or more yards. This is, this is a problem. This is a problem with this style of defense, is that it's okay if your bend don't break, but that means that you got to tackle well. Mm-hmm. You got to be wrapping up, and it's got to be one on one making the plays. For me, those are the three big things SMU has to do to win in 2017. And you know what? It, it, you look at their schedule. I think it's navigable. I I think uh, I I I think that this is a team that does have seven wins on the schedule. Like I said, a lot of people, a lot of sports writers, people who know college football, we did our writer's poll for the magazine recently, and I don't think we're spoiling too much, but part of it was about, you know, some people did mention SMU and how good they could be this year, and mm-hmm. some people think 8-9 wins is on the table. I think it is, and I don't think there's really any reason that this team could not uh, could not be the breakout team in Texas in 2017. There's a lot of reasons to think that, especially when you take a look at their schedule. You know, you're you're looking at something. You know, Stephen F. Austin should be a win. You get North Texas at home, mm-hmm. probably should be a win. Arkansas State probably should be a win at home. Connecticut at home probably should be a win, and then Tulane. You know, those are that's five wins right there. The rest of the schedule's tough. Yeah. And you know what? You're probably gonna have to steal one. Yeah. Maybe you have to go to Cincinnati and win. Maybe you have to. Uh, maybe you have to go uh, to. Maybe you have to help beat Tulsa at home or Central right. Florida at home. Right. But it's there, and yeah. there's no doubt in my mind. That SMU has the talent, not just to make a bowl, but to contend mm-hmm. 
in the American Athletic Conference, especially when you've got players like Cortland Sutton back and you've got a number of your defensive stalwarts back. To me, it comes down to the margins. It comes down to red zone. It comes down to making one-on-one tackles. And it probably comes down to Ben Hicks. You hate to put it on one kid, but Ben Hicks has got to be the kind of guy that SMU thinks he can be if they're going to get where they want to go in 2017.